Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Alto Pictures Presents. I have a great show lined up for you today. Uh, some Something special and something fun. But first things first, guys, please hit that subscribe button. You know, let's get this show rocking and hit that bell button. That's a magic bell that when you hit the bell, it'll let you know when there's a new episode up. So please hit the subscribe and hit the bell. Let's get this thing rocking. Hi guys, let's get this show rolling. I have a great show planned for us today. I have uh, two great things. I have a video from Grim Jack that I did back in the mid 80s, again with that show that I produced, a song called Janet. As usual, it rocks and it kicks ass. And it's a pretty good video too. So uh, that's gonna come back in a little bit for all you 80s fans who like that 80s video feel. Now you're gonna get it on this. But first, uh, I have a, did an interview with a great guy, a friend of mine, Dave Neugebauer. Dave is a great video director, a great engineer, uh, all-around video pro. I worked with Dave my first time uh, on the Metallica tour. He was directing, I was the camera op, and uh, it was a great tour and, and uh, a lot of fun. And Dave has a tremendous background in the industry. Uh, he's worked with David Bowie, he worked with Cher, um, so, many, so many people. And uh, I met with him down at the State Farm Arena uh, the other day. He's down here uh, with the Eagles. The Eagles are opening up their, their U.S. tour, the Hotel California tour. And uh, Dave is directing and helped put that show together. So I went down there to have a little discussion with Dave. So let's go down there and uh, see what we have to talk about. Hi guys, how you doing today? Welcome to the show. I'm here with an esteemed guest, Dave Newtonbauer, a great director, uh, engineer, or consummate pro in, in your audio field. I think you're a little, I think you're a little, a little bit of a legend because when I when I name your name, everyone goes, "Oh, I know Dave," and it goes either way. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the stories are they're not true. Nah, not I, as bad as uh, I, I worked with you on Metallica and you, and you fired me the first day. I did? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't follow James as he went down to the end of the, the stage. I picked up Kurt and he told me if I do that again, I'm going home. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to go home, so. And you didn't. You didn't <laughs> I didn't do it again and right. I wound up staying. And you were wonderful. Yeah. Well, it was good. It was fun. A lot of fun. But anyway, tell me, uh, give the audience a little bit. Um, your background and how you got started and um, what brought you to this level. You know, I got out of the Navy in Guam and uh, I was looking for a gig and somebody uh, had said there was a guy at a TV station was looking for somebody new electronics so I went in there and started out as an air op and the things just went. It was a little tiny place with some really cool people there and we just kind of did all sorts of stuff and we got all sorts of, we got a new switcher with the very first uh, DVE, this vital industry mm -hmm. squeeze and for some reason our guy in Guam bought one. And so I learned that, and then, I mean, I just, I worked on stuff. I fixed cameras, uh, I ended up doing news, because I fixed a lens one time, went out to test it, and went and put the tape in to look and see how it was, and had their head shooter said, hey, who shot that? I said, I did, and he, so that was it. And I, you know, kind of switched and did news, and did all sorts of stuff. This was in Guam where I got yeah. started, you know. But then I finally went home to San Francisco, and I freelanced, and then got a job shooting, uh, shooting and sound teching for CNN when they opened up the San Francisco Bureau, and, then I got headhunted to a little station in San Jose where, I mean, I thought I was going to be a hardcore photojournalist there for a while, but then something just horrible went down. I didn't want to do it anymore, so I did something even more horrible for a year and a half. I shot local production, wow. uh, local Ford Spots and Diamond Center, and oh my God, yeah. Uh, guy with the furniture store said, why you got to bring in all those lights? I just run around with my, ca my little yeah. camcorder last night. I didn't need that. So yeah, they you don't, know, it is a color. Color commercial, we would like to have color, yeah. but uh, it helps. Then uh, I just uh, I got uh, got a call to see if uh, my rig wasn't busy, if I could go out to some warehouse out in Alameda, California, and I said, yeah, sure. And I went out there. And I can. The, the short story is, is that uh, it was uh, I ended up shooting a little promotional video for the band Asleep at the Wheel because it was a Norm convention in San Francisco, and they'd come out with a new album, and that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that, and. Uh, and they hired me to do Eddie DeBarlow's 40th birthday party, just cover that, uh, at the new Hard Rock in San Francisco, and I did that, and I edited it, and they liked that, and uh, 
I think it was the Bay Area Music Awards, asked if I wanted to do handheld for that. I did that, and then they said, hey, man, you want to go on a tour? And it was I had my choice between Madonna and David Bowie, and I absolutely said, if you do Madonna, you're going to have to dance with her on stage. And I said, I'll, I'll do Bowie, you know. That was my choice even before I found out about the dancing. So I said, David Bowie, that was it. And it's... Uh, it's been on since. Yeah, I've been doing that ever since. So you, you started out, you know, on the, in the touring business, and obviously, you said, as a camera operator. And then after so many years, you switched over to directing, or was it a natural progression, or um, just something you wanted to try? I, I mean, I had the tech background. I, mm -hmm. I came from, you know, technical, you know, and, and that was like, kind of like what work, what was my big claim to fame in Guam, what made them notice me and do stuff, is I just... The cameras were a mess. The studio cameras looked like hell. They were IVC 500s and mm -hmm. ancient, ancient. And they looked terrible. So uh, I asked the Chinese engineer guy, Mr. Wu, that I worked with, and said, could I mess with those? Could I you know, work with the cameras? And he uh, he gave me this book, all this Chinese notation, and said, you, you, you read, you learn. And so, okay, I read it. The first thing I want to do is clean the optics. Well, I pull, opened up the camera, I pulled out the filter wheels, and they were like, that was the problem. Yeah. I mean, they were old cameras, but I mean, they had like a quarter inch of dust bunnies on the on the glass inside. So I cleaned that out, and the general manager called that night and said, "Oh, dude, what happened to the cameras? What, did we get new cameras?" I was like, "No, you know, new, just just new fixed them." I said, "I didn't fix them." And they're like, "Shh, okay." But yeah, man, I started out in in, in our business as uh, the handheld camera guy and the climber. I did all our climbing yeah. for like the first twelve years or whatever. But. Um, I was still living in the San Francisco Bay Area and I worked for Steve Payne and Bill Grant Presents when I wasn't touring because I was freelancing. I got hooked up with him because that was another one of the jobs I did before I took a tour was something that kind of uh, knocked her and hired me but threw me off to BGP to shoot a Christmas party. So they knew me and, uh, and I ended up doing the original video install at Shoreline Amphitheater and worked with them there. And you know, I would engineer some of the shows sometimes. I mean, I, I, could, I could read an O-scope, I could fix things. I wasn't really... I mean, I, uh, I I could set levels, right. you know, but I hadn't really gotten really, really deep into stuff at that point. But uh, just as it went, you know, I shot and did stuff. And then in 92, I ended up being the assistant engineer on Zoo TV with you 2 And that was an education, and that went. And, but I ended up doing handheld on stage for that. Uh, because we just, they shifted things around, and we got all these new young trainee personnel, mm -hmm. so it was freed up a spot. And, and then Pop Mart went out and I got the call, asked if I wanted to be the chief engineer. And I went, well, um, I remember my wife was sitting there going, <laughs> but I thought, why not? You know, and I did it. And it was, uh, it was, you know, baptism by fire. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, you know, I did have the technical background and just, I found myself in situations where, dude, you got to figure it out or, you know, they're going to send you home. And it worked. I, it, it, it went well. I mean, it was grueling, and I didn't have a lot of fun on that tour. But by the end of it, I had some good engineering jobs. So, what was the the first show, big tour that you directed? That you finally put the um, camera down? And um, in '98, uh, I was engineering Cher, and uh, the director she twisted her ankle, and something happened, and she just it wasn't getting better. Wasn't getting better. Finally, they decided they needed to send her home, and they go, well, we're going to have to bring in a director. And actually, Doriana Sanchez, who was Cher's choreographer, and the director, Kate Ferris, both said, you know, Dave knows the show as well as anybody. He stares at it and does the stuff, so do it. And I sat down and I did it, and I ended up keeping the job, and I ended up cutting her next tour. And then it pretty much just... Kind of, kind of what I did, uh, that was 98, then I... But I, about that time, I started engineering for Paul McCartney, so that was kind of good. I mean, I would, I would engineer him and then go off and do Cher, and then the Cher thing went, and I did McCartney, and I think it was McCartney that I got the nod for the um, Spice Girls. Oh, I don't know, I'm just confused, man. It's, you get old, your brain goes. It's, it's like Spice Girls. Uh, that's something, I mean, I engineered 21 Days in London for, uh, with Prince. And uh, well, I took over for another engineer who had to leave. And but prior to that, I mean, I'd done Panic at the Disco. I, I was engineering uh, Tim McGraw Faith Hill for two years and did Panic at the Disco. And that was kind of cool because it was a little band, but it opened up some doors because some of the people out there, you know, do other bands. So that was good. But uh, 
Yeah, it was out on a McCartney run where they, I got the nod and said, hey, you want to do Spice Girls? I said, ah, but they were going to go all around the world in six months. And we all, a bunch of us said, yeah, man, we're in. You know, they didn't do it, but, you know, yeah, we were in. So we did that, and that was, uh, that was something. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of work. I mean, everybody in the crew worked. I mean, we, we got there at 6.30 in the morning, and myself and the assistant director, we would, you know, get the screens out, build the screens to the stage and fly them, get the projectors, because we had side projectors, yeah. get the projectors up, get all the cabling run to it, you know, get them on and heated and pointed to the screens. And then uh, Gene, my assistant engineer, would go, uh, well, you know, yeah. Gene McAuliffe, yeah, he would go wire up uh, the little inter, the, the kind of closed circuit TV, so the band, which was split in two cages so, left and right. So you wouldn't say that you were a white lover, huh? A which? A white lover. No, 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 I try not to do it too much. I know I'm, I do more of it now, but I, I still tend to like, I still always come in with my crew. Um, I help the engineers set up the system. No, I, no, I, I worked with you on Metallic and you were there and you uh, pretty much held things together. Now, we hear, uh, you know, the show at, at the State Farm Arena doing the Eagles Hotel California tour. Right. Now, you did the first two shows that everything went pretty well with that so yeah, far. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. You know, when we worked on Metallica, it was a little bit uh, different. We had a lot of content, so we had a lot of different framing mm -hmm. that we had to do. Is the show here more well, like that? I would say it's almost trickier because we've got very skinny side columns left and right. We've got a very narrow, not even a rectangle. Well, it's a rectangle, but it's long and you know, it's like this. So. And there's times when I'm switching them into both screens, so I try to say, hey, you're in the sides, and the side slice is only maybe 20% yeah. of your entire left to right raster. I mean, it's just a tiny slice. Yeah, so, yeah it's pretty so, tricky. So, yeah. so do you, um, obviously back in the day when you did your first tours, it was just pretty much cut to screen, you know, no, there was no, the content really wasn't, wasn't, a, no, there wasn't was, an issue. There was no content when I first started yeah. doing it. I mean, maybe there might be a videotape role, but yeah. not very often. And, uh, yeah, it's just you know left right screen or maybe one over the stage. And do you uh, do you enjoy cutting a show with content or or do you like to free them of just being able to you know have the cameras go out, have them feed you shots and or you call them or do you, know, do, you do you feel confined a lot of times when you have content and, or certain ratios and other screen that you have to fill? Um, you know, like on this one, there are times in the first, in the Hotel California part of the show where actually my cut is only seen by on the front screens, maybe 20% of the time. But I've got 270 screens for the okay. cheap seats, so I, I cut my little heart out, man. It's, uh, it's cool. I, I don't, uh, we don't have any songs uh, other than those first ones, uh, you know. I'm, I'm always cutting for something, the best way to say it. I mean, yeah, that's... Uh, other than once we get past Hotel California, we get to Seven Bridges Road, which is all graphics. But again, I'm cutting for the, the, the 270 screens. But everything else is pretty much, you know, there may be a center screen or like, we tend to have pips over yeah. the graphics on this one. So it's uh, very rarely that there's no graphics. But to answer your question, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I haven't done too many shows where I mean, I just had to kind of basically sit out while the graphics ran or anything, so. But yeah, I like cutting cameras. I mean, there are times when I just get feel like an OG and just want to like say, just I just want to cut the damn thing. I don't want yeah. portrait screens. I just want a nice sixteen by nine, you know. Yeah, we, kind of, we, cut, we kind of went through that on the Bon Jovi tour. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, TBJ cut that show, and there was just a lot of content, and you know, framing had to be you know mixed, and and you can see that Tony at, at times was just like. Just let me cut my show. Just let me because you know, it, it does kind of kind of yeah. hold you back a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. content has become such a big part of uh, the concert experience. Well, now I think that. because the LED screens have made video part of the set. Yeah. Whereas before, I mean, we just I like, did um, Kiss Psycho Circusing. We had a forty foot wide screen upstage center for the three D and stuff. We do it looked beautiful, but lights you know would go like full blast, and all of a sudden it was just a kind of a oval colored rag upstairs <laughs> center, you know. And it's, it was depressing. It was very, very fun. The first day that I was on a gig where we could throw up all of our stuff on white, and lights couldn't even see their stuff. It was a beautiful day, actually. So, I think I think you hit a little bit before, but what was your least favorite or worst tour uh, that you through the years? I'm sure there's many, but 
You know, I, actually, I, I enjoy pretty much all of them. I, I think, the, again, I think Pop Mart. I mean, I have a lot of respect for the band, but there was just, it was too much of an extension of Zoo TV. It was um, the, this big screen that we used, the technology wasn't quite there, so there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of compromise and stuff we did with it. And, uh, yeah, I think that one, even though education-wise, it was probably my best one. I mean, I really appreciate that tour for letting me, like, find and refine my chops as an engineer. But uh, that's it. I mean, I usually enjoy most of them. I mean, it's... Uh, because they, they all have their, their challenge. And, yeah. And, you know, you get you know, your fulfillment out of, uh, you know, all of them. The Metallica run was um, a fun run. It had its moments both ways, yeah. Well, that was uh, pretty pretty wild and pretty uh, pretty interesting. Thanks, Dave. We'll get back to Dave in a minute. But as I promised, uh, we ha- I have a video for you from Grim Jack from back in, like I said, in the mid '80s. So let's rock out to some Janet. Don't 
rock and roll. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. That was Grimjack with Janet. That was them back in the 80s, like I said, 1984 or so. But the guys are still around rocking today. So if you ever get a chance and you see the Grimjack playing around, go check them out. As you can see, they're a great rock and, ba- rock and roll band. A lot of fun. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. They got my, you got my recommendations. So go, go check it out. But anyway, let's get back to uh, the interview with Dave. Let's go back to the State Farm Arena and continue with the discussion I had with Dave. So, uh, so you said this is you know, your second show. You have your, your your third show coming up. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, how many shows on this run do you have with you? Oh, I think the count is around twenty six. We're not a lot of cities. We're doing like country western act. Like we uh, we do this show tomorrow. And then we go up to New York and we do three shows with two days off and, you know, a show, a show, two days off, then a show. Then we fly home for a week and then Dallas, I mean, it's... It's a nice schedule. Yeah, it's very spotty, very loose. And uh, we go until the end of April and then that's it for this Hotel California. We're going to do two of these shows in, uh, in the UK, in London. We're going to do two shows in Wembley at the end of August. But... Uh, as of April in the U.S., the Hotel California tour is over, and it's by Hotel California. I mean, we've got a full orchestra, we've yeah. got you know a choir, we've got, and so that's over. Then. Can you just give a a little bit behind the scenes what you know is going on you know in video world as far as the setup and you know you talked a little bit about you know content and, and there's you as a director. You have do you have an assistant director or uh, what you know when when you come in in the morning to do the show. What's, what's your routine? Well, well Laura, when we come in to set help, you know, I, I work with the engineer. We set up the video system out uh, back. Uh, my, the black cam we have on the downstage edge was my baby and the thing I wanted, so I set that up. I build the track and get that up there and set that up there, and then that's usually about it. Um, our, our signal flow or our, our setup is kind of odd because we have an E2 and a D3, a disguise, excuse me. It's, can't call it a D3 anymore, but... Uh, we've got a guy, Simone Anaya, he runs the uh, the D3 from front of house and he does the graphics. He's an amazing graphic artist and he drives that thing and he's got some live effects that he does. And then uh, there's an E2 that's also out of front of house. And what happens is I, I have, we have basically three signals. We have left, right screen and upstage center. For me, I send aux one, two, three off to those screens. Aux four feeds the 270 screens. But, my three channels go out to the E2 operator, who happens to be my son, um, Victor Neugebauer. And he's, he actually feeds the processors that go to the wall. Okay. And so the three channels, he's got um, two channels that, um, he feeds two channels to the, D, the uh, disguise, the D3, for the few times where he does effects, because most of the time it's E2 and out, and he's taking, the E2 operator is bringing in the, the graphics from the disguise, and then he's using pips and taking my cut and my feeds and putting it over. Or sometimes it isn't; it's just direct. But you know, I, I cut cameras in the back. Uh, Simone spits out his graphics at the front, and they all meet at uh, the E2, and then the E2 routes it out. And so there's no more days of a uh, switcher straight to the screen. Uh, no, I mean, I tell you what, that's what I miss. I mean. No, I mean, I, on this show, I've got, I do a couple effects, but in the old days, I mean, that was it. You try to see how cool and how you could, you know, do build effects on the switcher and do stuff. I mean, I did a lot of effects on the switcher for the Metallica show, but but we had the inbox box where really, you know, the inbox was kind of limited in the yeah. stuff it could do. But I mean, it's moving more and more. I mean, more and more, you've got a disguise or a server that, you know, I mean, that's in the, in the, the lingo now, you know, when they say server, when you say server, to me, I just think it's a, a video playback device, but the young people, yeah. man, server is like an everything box. It's your effects, your, yeah. your video playback, your effects, and all the bells and whistles, and the switches, just a very boring little piece yeah. of equipment that just cuts cameras, which makes me a little sad, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that, that was kind of, you know, gives you an answer to that question, because I was going to say, you know, what do you see differently from when you started to now, and it's, has the director taken more of a back a back, uh, step back as opposed to the, you know, the uh, content operation or, you know, the, you know. Well, we're, 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 I'd say we're pretty much neck and neck. I mean, I, I don't get too hung up on who's the boss and who's the what, 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 but um, like our content guy, our server guy, he stands out there with the Grand MA and he's doing stuff and, you know, he's, 
Because you go, you know, don't, you, know, you sit in the back, you know, nobody. I mean, he's like, you know, everybody thinks he's in charge. I don't, I don't care who they think is in charge. You know, it doesn't matter to me. You know what? But, uh, but I mean, in just in, in in importance or whatever, I think it's about even, man. I think you know, I gotta give my, I gotta, you know, the, that that content guy is just as important as me, and and for for the same reasons, the E two ops just as important. Yeah. I mean. He, it's the wrong cue and he cheeses both of us. I mean, all three of us have to, like, we working together or else it's not going to work out at all. I mean, I report to the band yeah. just because I'm the geezer. I've been with these guys for a long time, but, I mean, it's, that's about as far as, like, who the boss is. I mean, and again, I, if it gets to the point where we really got to start fighting about who's the boss, I don't want to be part of it, you know, yeah. it's like, uh, so. Do you, uh, you've seen how far, you know, technology has come from when, when you started mm -hmm. to now? What do, you, what do you see the future as? I mean, is it... Um, right now, we're, we're, I'm really interested in these ROI cameras. And that's, it's an 8K camera where you actually window out. You sit back with the tripod handles and yeah. a monitor, and you can window four separate images off of one camera. Wow. And uh, I see that being a real game changer and a real... That's the, the next exciting new bit of technology. I think that's going to come for us. I was in... Uh, in DeKalb, Illinois, where they had one set up for me in uh, last in January, a few weeks ago, and I went and played with it for a while. It was, you know, there were certain things I went to it thinking, you know, what's the latency going to be like? You know, no, the buffering's really quick, it's clean, it's nice, um, uh, particularly for a band like the Eagles, where they don't move around a whole lot. It's great. Um, so is it cutting out the camera guy's job? No, you still need a guy. You still need a guy to drive that. Uh, so I'll make sure I have a job done. No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real, I'm, I'm a real advocate for. Uh, I don't care how good the technology is, how many robots you get in there. You still need a human to run the robot. I mean, I know there's people running around trying to get that to yeah. not be right. You know, get it to do face recognition and track and stuff. And there's all stuff done like that. But I mean. I mean, I started, I cut my teeth as a rock and roll handheld camera guy, and I don't, there's not a robot built that can really... Mimic what you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. can grab those shots like that. I mean, uh, my, my show, I'm, it's almost all robotic. I mean, I've got two long lenses that are run by guys. I have a slash camera that's up in the seats, and I have a handheld on stage. Everything else is being controlled remotely. Yeah. So I've got uh, a robot camera down left, down right, then one on a dolly track. A black cam B2, uh, B20, just runs on a 10 inch track. Um, I've got a robot that's, that we'll call it just center stage, just a little bit off the left of center stage on a keyboard riser, gets me drums, it can swing around, get orchestra. And then I've got another robot on the orchestra, I've got a fixed POV that gives me a clean Don Henley shot right at the drums. And I think that's it. I've got 11 cameras, so hopefully yeah. that adds up. Yeah, yeah so we sort of had a, a TBJ on Bon Jovi's. Likes his robotic cameras because the same thing we had, you know, one in front of house was me. Then we had, we didn't have handhelds, we had three Furios, you know, one center stage and one, you know, either side of the third. It's edge. nice if you've got the room for one, man. I yeah, like that. Yeah, well, that was stadium, so, we, you know, we had the room and it was fun. And then he had, you know, his robotics around around the drums, mm -hmm. two cameras going around, a camera going around David, the whole shot, and, uh, and one over oh, the percussion. So, we, yeah, it's, uh, technology has, has made it fun. Well, I mean, this is, was a necessity more here at our, our front row. Um, we've been trying to thin it out because as the seats become more expensive, people yeah. are less tolerant of a cameraman yeah. having their butt in their face for the performance. So that's kind of, I mean, I used to have a, a jib stage left in a pit and a handheld in a pit, and then we got rid of the jib. And it was two handhelds in the pit, but that just wasn't, I just couldn't find, because the crew has changed up a bunch, so I just couldn't find handheld guys that were that steady enough for me to want to do it. So we had it on sticks, and that wasn't quite right, so I took the stage right sticks and thus begat the slash camera up in the yeah. seats. Um, and then I had one, and that I ended up you know, having to do a lot of vaudeville for the people in the front row and hand out guitar picks so that they wouldn't complain and stuff. And finally, uh, when we started this one, I finally said, you know, when I was did Stones in Hyde Park, we had this cool little thing called a black camera that went around Charlie's drums. And really liked to look into that, and so we were able to get get one. That just as luck would have it, there was one rotting away in the uh, Solo Tech warehouse up in Montreal. And um, the guys at Solo Tech come up with a brilliant way to tend the cable because they originally got the black cam for uh, Rush for David Davidian, but 
problem was they said they had to have a guy running around the downstage edge page in the cable on the thing and I thought that was kind of crazy and I said but you know send it over to Brandon Dover and uh, Brian Van Horst over there at Solo Tech and I said you know I called him and said I'm sending that thing down to you come up with a way so I don't have to have somebody ten cable I know you guys can do it and they actually did I mean that's what we're doing today is we're changing up the cables because it's been two years now so we're changing up some of the video cables and the energy track but it's very clean I'll show you two when we're done here but it's yeah, awesome. It pages its own cable and it's all good, it's all clean and uh Bob's your uncle. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> and uh, the band loves it and yeah. the boss is happy because it means I got nobody interfering in the pit. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. good. Uh, yeah, well, I guess I'll give you a break, I know you got a lot of work to do. Um so I I don't know if you can say so what do you have coming up after this? You, you know, as a freelance you kinda of live, you know, show to show, but do you see anything down in the future? You know, that you're yeah, I mean, it's, more. it's you know, but my brother-in-law was asked, when are you going to retire? And I said, well, I'll retire when I'm tired or they quit calling me. I mean, after this thing ends in April, I'm going straight over to the Stones, and I'll do that, and that'll take me up until July. And I don't think I'll continue with them because the boys are grown, so I like yeah. to spend time. My wife's a teacher, so I'll give her, you know, we have six weeks together while she's not working, and we'll do something fun in the summer. And then, you know, like I said, there's a rumor that this thing might go, and if not, there's... So I don't know, I just kind of wait. I don't want to say anything that, that's going to yeah. jinx me, but I've been <laughs> fortunate in the 34 years that I've been doing this that I've uh, I've never had to go look for work. It's usually found me, so, okay. you know, that's, that's... Hi, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Tom. Oh, that was me. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show today. Uh, I had a lot of fun bringing it to you. I had a lot of fun talking to Dave, going down there and talking with him. It was fun bringing you some old memories back from Grim Jack. So, guys... Continue to keep on watching Alto Pictures Presents. And the more people that watch, the more stuff I can do. So please hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, tell your friends, spread the word. Let's get Alto Pictures huge. Let's make this thing a real, a real production, a real show. So guys, the more followers I have, the more subscription subscribers, the more I can do. So guys, please hit the subscribe button, hit that bell so you know magically when I put something new up. But anyway, for today, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I'll have another show up shortly. I got some things I have coming up. I have some interview with T.C. Cross uh, that probably be on next week's show. I did an interview with her a couple of years ago. She's a Long Island legend. Uh, so I have some stuff with her, some uh, business suit, uh, Jeff Dayton. I have so much coming up that you guys can enjoy. So come on back, hit that button, subscribe, and let's have some fun. Rock on. Rock on.